Welcome to BeerAmerica.tv. I'm Michael Tesoro. John Pinkerton. And I'm Bob Cannon. And we are here at the Boston Beer Company, the one and only, right here in Boston. Boston, Massachusetts. At the Craft Brewers Conference. And we are uh, going to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the vibrancy and the passion and uh, the interesting beers that Sam does in the back rooms that nobody ever gets to hear about, but uh, is a good demonstrator of just how passionate and how vibrant Sam Adams is with developing and looking at new types of beers. So what can you tell us? You mentioned a little earlier uh, this goose that, right. you're, that you've tried. Well, we, we have um, 24 different styles that are available commercially, you know, give or take. Uh, some come in and out of the rotation. But this brewery that we're at right now is our research and development brewery. So we do a lot of new and uh, experimental things and we get to you know, play around. It's, it's very fortunate we're not a production facility here in Boston, with the exception of Utopias, which is the only production brew that we make. Uh, everything else is uh, racked in kegs and just um, served in the local market or served to our guests who come here for, for um, opinions. We, we, we try a lot of beers and people just ask what they think. So we get to play around. This is a, a very small system about the size of a good brew pub, but uh, we get to play around with it and do a lot of really, really fun things. And some of those things are uh, brews like um, uh, a goose or um, we do some lambics. We do a lot of wood aging, barrel aging. We just had um, three wooden tons installed. There were about 120 barrel tons that we had installed uh, in our barrel room. And, and we had coopers come over from Portugal to install them. We found them from a, from a, um, a cognac um, distillery, uh, excuse me, that may be wrong, but a cognac um, producer in, um, in Italy who uh, had, had contracted to have 12 of them made and they were delivered but he only installed three of them so they had nine lying around and we were looking for some wooden barrels we had you know one hand um, helped another and told us about them so we had them reinstalled in Portugal they were shipped to Portugal um, uh, they were put back together and uh, held water so we purchased them and brought them over here and we had the Portuguese coopers come over and install them in our barrel room and uh, hopefully you guys will get a chance Very to see cool. them it's Definitely a lot of fun to check that out. what kind of wood is this? They are uh, oak. We are not exactly sure the country of origin because they had been uh, sitting idle for a while. But uh, yeah, they're, they're about uh, three inches thick, the staves, and um, we, we uh, installed them in the last month and we uh, just started putting beer in them last week. So we're really excited about that. Very so cool. It should be a lot of fun. All right. Now, uh, you started, um, if you will, kind of at the bottom here with Sam Adams. That's for sure. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, I came in as a temp. My, my background is. Um, Liberal arts. I have a degree in Irish history, actually, right. and uh, I was um, I was applying to grad school, and I was teaching at my local high school and uh, working for a temporary agency. And whoever called me first, that's what I went and did that day. I was waiting for the next semester to start, and uh, one day I got a call to come down to Sam Adams. Um, I happened to know something similar, a computer system that I had just worked on, and they expected this job would take three days. Um, and I finished it in a day, and I said, "Well, you know, I'd love to stay for a couple more days, but I've, I've finished the job, and I don't, I, you know, I don't have any more work to do. So, I'll, you know, thanks very much. Sign my timesheet, and I'll go on." And they said, "Well, you know, we, we can find something else for you to do if you'll come back tomorrow." And they gave me a six-pack of beer, and uh, I've been coming back every day since. That was about 15 years ago. All Sometimes right. I take a case now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you get to you get to work on the what is essentially a brewer's playground. And yeah. uh, it all came, came serendipitously. It that's, did, it was. It's a great story. And I've gotten all my education, all my brewing education. I'd done some home brewing, you know, and I liked beer. I, I went to school in Ireland and acquired a, a, a taste for Guinness while I was over there when I came back to America. I just wasn't able to drink American domestic lagers, nothing wrong with them. I just didn't have the flavor I was looking for. It was right at the, the, uh, uh, the birth of the craft movement. And I can still remember the first lager I had, Boston lager that I had. And I thought, wow, what a great beer. It's, really serendipitous that I end up working here uh, all, the, all these years later. I, I just got lucky, it's one of those things. But I've been, I've been really fortunate and I've been um, trained. I've been through the Master Brewers Association program, short course in Madison, Wisconsin, and the University of California Davis uh, uh, Brewers, um, Professional Brewers Certificate course uh, that prepares you for the IBD exam as well. So I, I've been very, very fortunate. The company's been very good to me. Uh, and I like to think that I've repaid them as well. You know, honest, I can honestly say that uh, my first sort of introduction to craft brewing before I really had a notion that I might be a brewer was Boston Lager, my, my late grandfather Pinkerton. Um, 
introduced me. He, he, I would work for him in the in the mornings, and uh, he'd stop work about eleven o'clock and say, uh, "It's time for a beer." We'd have a beer and a schnapps at like before lunch. It was uh, it was it was rough. Sounds like a good guy to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, I I'll never forget that first taste of uh, uh, Boston Lager. No, no lie. I, I, you know, I mean, I try beers all the time. That's one of our uh, missions here in, in, in uh, Boston Beer Company is to try beers all over the world. Everywhere we go, we're always you know, going to brew pubs and different breweries and you know, looking for inspiration. And uh, I've yet to find a, a lager that I think is better. There are certainly several that have been very good, but uh, I think Boston Lager is one of the finest examples of the style in the world. But it's a pretty unique personal. lager, really. It is. The, the, the overall character is very distinctive. And it's has been so for quite a few years now. It's right. not like it's uh, it's really evolved over time. Right. Well, we haven't changed the recipe. It's Jim's great great grandfather's recipe. We use the same hops. It's the same recipe that he first started. That it was Louis Cook's Golden Lager way back in the day. But uh, it's the same beer that Jim made in his kitchen. Mm. You know, way back in 1984. Very cool. Yeah. Very amazing. Cool. Well, we'll be talking to Jim in a little bit, um, and I guess we'll uh, get some footage around the brewery here. Excellent. Thanks for taking the time with us. This has been great. The pleasure is mine. Thanks for having me. And if you haven't seen any of Sam Adams' famous commercials, the star of the show. Yeah, I don't know about star. Like I said, i got a good face for radio. That's what my <laughs> wife tells me anyway. Well, thanks That's a cool. lot. Pleasure was mine. Thank you for having me. You are watching TV with Michael DeSoro, Bob, Bob Cannon, Cannon, John Pinkerton. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, iTunes, etc. Et 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 Cheers. Cheers.